What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, September 29th, 2015, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show any, anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just Go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Donald Trump is set to return back on Fox News. He will appear on Tuesday's O'Reilly Factor following his claim last week that he would not be, quote, doing any more Fox shows for the foreseeable future. Uh, Fox News has announced that the presidential candidate is set to appear on the O'Reilly Factor on Tuesday following Trump's tweet last week stating that he would refrain from making appearances on the cable network. On September 23rd, Trump tweeted, Fox News has treated me very unfairly and I have therefore decided that I won't be doing any more Fox shows for the foreseeable future. Fox canceled Trump's planned Factor appearance for last week following the Twitter flap. Fox News also announced last week that Trump was set to meet with senior news executives. Now, Kanye West is beginning his 2020 campaign a little early. First, there was the announcement of the VMAs last month, followed by a well-timed Vanity Fair interview. What's next for Candidate West? A just-announced performance at a San Francisco Democratic National Committee fundraiser, the perfect place to network the political elite. According to a report from NBC, West will attend the October 10th event at an afternoon concert held at the city's Warfield Theater and is, quote, expected to perform songs from his latest album, Swish. There are some other notable guests on the RSVP list as well, namely President Obama himself. The only thing left to do is speculate on the set list. Would would Kanye West actually debut new music at a political fundraiser? The answer seems likely a clear yes. Though, even if not, we'll likely have the video President Obama watching West perform Mm -hmm. all day to look forward to. Shortly after authorities announced they were sealing Bobby Christina Brown's final autopsy report, Bobby Brown's attorney applauded the move in a statement and accused Nick Gordon of playing a role in harming the deceased daughter of Brown and Whitney Houston. Christopher Brown said in a statement in regards to the civil litigation, we believe we know who harmed Bobby Christina Brown, and his name is Nick Gordon. Brown's lawyer noted that Bobby Christina's boyfriend withdrew a motion to dismiss a lawsuit suing him for $40 million in damages, alleging Gordon did, quote, so that he could avoid having to give his deposition, which was scheduled for the day he withdrew the motion. Mr. Gordon will now have to give his deposition under oath. Bobby Brown said in the same statement, I look forward to having the court hear the evidence in the civil lawsuit and hopefully the criminal action very soon. After spending nearly six months in a coma, Bobby Christina Brown passed away at the age of 22 on July 26, 2015. Reality TV personality Kim Zolak was forced to withdraw from season 21 of Dancing with the Stars after a mini-stroke prevented her from appearing on Monday's edition of the show. Zolak was, sent, was seen via video about midway through the episode when she told the audience, I feel great after last week's medical emergency, which earned her three days in the hospital. She explained, referring to how she lives in Atlanta and the show's tapes in Los Angeles. My doctors told me that it's just too soon to fly. I can go next week, but I just couldn't go today, so I'm really sorry sad. Co-host Tom Bergeron replied, this is don't shoot the messenger portion of the show. He said, this is a very unusual circumstance. It is a, it's still a competition. The rules stated, and these are the rules that we've had since 2005 when we started the show. In the instance of illness or other re- health-related matters affecting a participant's ability to participate in the game, they must withdraw. Zoliak emphasized, I can dance, I just can't fly. If I live in Vegas or even 12 hours away, I'd be there tonight. Because of Zoliak's unexpected elimination from the competition, no one else was cut from the program during Monday's two-hour episode. However, the other dancers did not learn they were safe until the final seconds of the show. Still in the run for the coveted Mirror Bowl trophy are Bindi Irwin and Derek Hugh, Nick Carter and Sharna Burgess, Carlos Pena Vega and Whitney Carson, Tamar Braxton and Valentina Trim Marinsky, uh, um, Alex Sarkatelos and Lindsay Arnold, Alexa Pena Vega and Mark Ballas, Andy Grammer and Allison Holker, Hayes Gray- Greer and Emma Slater, Gary Busey and Anna Tubinuskaya, and Paula D and Louis Van Amstel. Bergeron and Aaron Andrews are the show's hosts. 
the Dancing with the Star judges panels is made up of Bruno Tolini, Carol Ann Ibada, and Julianne Huff. Zoliak is best known for her appearances on The Real Housewives of Atlanta and Don't Be Tardy. She is also the mother of six children. Australian model ba- Bailey Scarlett said she was drugged while drinking with Justin Bieber and his friends Sunday night in Melbourne. Bieber invited a number of models to join him for a listening party inside a recording studio. Local police officials confirmed to the entertainment tonight that they responded to a call at the studio from a woman who believed her drink had been spiked. Scarlett was then taken to a local hospital and advised to file an official report. In a Facebook post that was later deleted, the 18-year-old model described feeling lightheaded after having a few drinks with Bieber, E.T. reported. He, she said, when I arrived, my phone was taken from me. She said in the post, according to E.T., I was introduced to Justin, then was told to pour myself a drink of vodka and lemonade. I put my cup down and began chatting to a few of the girls, did a shot with Justin, and was poured another drink. By this time, I started to feel overly drunk and not right at all. My vision was ridiculously blurred. I felt like I was seeing ten faces at once. My lips, hands, and toes felt numb, and I became incoherent, the Post said. TMZ reported that the others at the studio denied Scarlett's story. Bieber has not publicly responded to the allegations. The allegations comes after a radio interview in August in which Bieber spoke about his past mistakes and how he was changing his life for the better. Actress Gigi Hadid slammed her critics in a lengthy post Monday on Instagram. The 20-year-old model and actress shared a body-positive message after social media users criticized a photo of herself she had posted from the Tommy Hilfiger News Fashion Week's show this month. She wrote, No, I don't have the same body type as the other models in shows. I represent a body image that wasn't accepted in high fashion before, and I'm very lucky to be supported by the designers, stylists, and editors that I am. Yes, I have boobs, I have abs, I have a butt, I have thighs, but I'm not asking for special treatment, she continued. You mean, your mean comments don't don't make me want to change my body. They don't want me to say no to the designers that ask me to be in their shows, and they definitely don't change the designers' opinions of me. Hadid is known for her work with guests Maybelline and Sea Folly, and has worked with the runaways for Michael Kors, Dolce & Gabbana, and Chanel. The stars posted illicit support from several celebrities, including model and America's Next Top Model host Tyra Banks. Banks wrote in response, I haven't met you yet at Gigi Hadid, but I feel you so much. Your words are powerful. Your words are necessary. Your words are vulnerable. Your words are real. Sending your hug and love from one model that has curves and a unique walk to another, Tyra. Hadid is the eldest of child of Muhammad Hadid and former model uh, and the real housewives of Beverly Hills star Yolanda Foster. The young star previously addressed body image in an interview with the Daily Mail Australia in August. Hadid said, when I was growing up, I was really athletic and I had an athletic body. Once I started modeling, one of my things was, okay, like, yeah, I don't need to be a man volleyball player, but I also don't want to be like a two pound soaking wet. Actress and singer Zendaya was recently honored with a limited edition Barbie doll in her likeness. 19-year-old received the toy at the Barbie Rock and Royals concert experience Saturday in Los Angeles. The doll's model after the Vivian Westwood gown and dreadlocks hairstyles and dye wore to the 2015 Academy Awards in February. Barbie wrote on Instagram, We are so excited to honor at Zendaya with this one-of-a-kind doll as she encourages girls to raise their voices and inspire us to hashtag be super. Zendaya said, When I was little, I couldn't find a Barbie that looked like me. My, how times have changed. Thank you at Barbie for this honor and for allowing me to be part of your diversification and expansion of the definition of beauty. Can't wait to keep doing amazing things with you. Zendaya's Oscars looked made headlines after fashion police host Juliana Rancey joked that the singer's dreadlocks looked like they smelled of patchouli oil or weed. The controversial comment led to Kelly Osbourne to quit the show despite Rancid's subsequent aqu- apology. Zendaya came to fame as Rocky Blue on Disney Channel's sitcom Shake It Up and has starred in K- as Casey Cooper in Casey Undercover since January. The actress also played Laura on season two of the Fox musical drama Empire and released her self-titled studio album in 2013. But 
Relating to this story, there's controversy. Singer Demi Lovato angered fans by suggesting Mattel should model a Barbie after her likeness Saturday. Social media users slammed the 23-year-old singer for appearing to steal the spotlight from fellow Disney Channel stars and diet. The 19-year-old actress was presented with a doll model after her 2015 Academy Award dress and dreadlocks hairstyle earlier that day. Lovato wrote, Hey, at Barbie, what about a curvy doll or one with true-to-size measurements? I'll model. Hashtag raise your voice. Hashtag be super. The tweet was favored thousands of times before the singer deleted the post. Fans criticized the former Sonny with a chance star for failing to congratulate Zendaya and taking away from the actress's moment. Uh, one user wrote, Demi Lovato could choose any time to criticize Barbie on not having realistic body size, but she only does it in response to Zendaya's doll. Zendaya's Oscars uh, made... A look made headlines after Fashion Police host Julianne Rancid joked that the star's hair looked like uh, smelled of patchouli oil or wheat. Many interpreted the comment as racial, and Zendaya thanked Mattel for allowing her to help expand the definition of beauty Sunday. Lovato will release her fifth studio album, Confident, on October 16th, and has a Robert Rodriguez-directed music video in the works for her single of the same name. Former child star Kim Fields is confirmed for The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 8. The 46-year-old actress will appear as a series regular on the Bravo's show alongside Candy Burris, Cynthia Bailey, Padisha Parks, Kenya Moore, and Portia Williams. Real Housewives released a trailer for the forthcoming season featuring Fields on Monday. The star wrote on Twitter, So excited to announce I'll be appearing on Season 8 of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Looking forward to a great season. Season 8 will premiere November 8 at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Former main cast member Sherry Whitfield will return as a friend of the Housewives, along with former guest Shayma Morton. Whitfield starred on, on season one through four, while Morton appeared on season five. Any leaks in Claudia Jordan, Jordan will not be returning. Fields is known for playing Dorothy Tootie Ramsey on the NBC sitcom Different Strokes and the Facts of Life, and went on to portray Regine Hunter on Fox's series Living Single. She last appeared in the Hallmark Channel movie For Better or For Worse in 2014. The 70th Annual Tony Award ceremony is to be broadcast from New York City on June 5th, 2016, according to CBS on Monday. No host or venue for the star-studded event were revealed. Ricky Kirshner and Glenn Weiss of White Chair Entertainment will return as executive producers, with Weiss also serving as director for the 17th consecutive year. The Tony honors theater, theater professionals for distinguished achievements on Broadway. Nominations for the prestigious prize will be announced on April 29th, 2015. 16. Broadway icons Kristen Chinawo and Alan Cumming were the MCs at the 2015 edition of the show, where Fun Home was named Best Musical, and The Curious Incident of the Dog in Nighttime earned the title for Best Play. One of the stars of MTV's extreme sports program, Nitro Circus, died Monday when he slammed into a tree during a skydiving attempt in North Carolina. Car uh, North California, officials say. Eric Rahner was performing the diving stunt as part of Monday's opening ceremony at a celebrity golf tournament in Sasquatch Valley, California, Powder Magazine reported. The golf course is located about five miles from Lake Tahoe's northwest shore. Authorities said witnesses report seeing Rahner crash into a tree as he attempted his landing and died at the scene. The other skydivers participating in the stunt were not harmed. Eric was an amazing person who made everyone and everything around him better. Freestyle motorcycle star Travis Pastrana, who also appeared in Nitro Circus, said. Rahner was a professional skier and an avid base jumper. Um, outside Television Senior Vice President Rob Ferris said, We are still trying to process this tragedy. Our heart goes out to his family. Monday, Outside Television posted a tribute video in honor and honoring Rahner on its YouTube channel. Officials say Rahner was struck in the tree about 30 feet off the ground for about 40 minutes before emergency crews could get him down. Authorities are investigating the cause of the accident, and the Federal Aviation Administration has been notified. Actor Vin Diesel announced on Facebook Sunday that he plans on producing one last Final Fast and Furious trilogy as the last chapter in the popular action-packed franchise. Diesel, Diesel wrote, Universal has been so good to me and so trusting on the vision. They have been like family. I promised the studio I would deliver one last trilogy to end the saga. Diesel, Diesel who's 48, says he's 
currently looking for a director to helm the latest entry, Fast and Furious 8, set to release in theaters on April 14, 2017. He says, my producing partner, Neil Moritz, would love for me to just sign off on as a director, but this is too special a franchise, so these matters have to be very carefully handed. To be clear, no one has been offered to help Fast 8 yet, let alone seeing a script. According to Diesel, he will announce the directors for the final trilogies of films with his next Facebook post. Uh, despite have, ha, Diesel has had a history of announcing new film projects on social media as he took to Instagram in August to announce that a new Triple X sequel will start shooting in December. The actor will next be seen in The Last Witch Hunter, which hits theaters on October 23rd. And in a related story, Paul Walker's daughter is suing Porsche, claiming the sports car that her father was in when he was killed two years ago suffered from numerous design def- defects. The lawsuit filed Monday by Metal Rain's Walker seek unspecific damages, defects that her lawyers claim kept the actor trapped in the Porsche Carrera GT when it crashed and burst into flames on November 2013. The suit claims the car, which was marketed as a street legal race car, lacked the proper stability control system and safeguards to protect occupants and keep it from catching fire after a collision. An email sent to representatives of Porsche North America was not immediately returned. The lawsuit was first reported Monday by celebrity website TMZ. Walker's death occurred on a break in the filming of Furious 7, the latest sequel in the Fast and Furious franchise. Rapper Drake expressed his views on his recent beef with fellow rapper Meek Mill at a concert over the weekend. While performing at the Landmark Festival in Washington, D.C. on Saturday, fans began chanting explicitives against Meek Mill, a.k.a. Robert Rakim Williams, right before the Toronto-based artist began rapping his diss song back-to-back. Drake said, don't worry, he's dead already, in regards to Meek Mill losing the back-and-forth battle between the two. His comments was followed by a raucous round of, of, of screens and applause from improving fans. Drake-born Audrey Drake Graham released Charged Up and Back to Back in July, soon after Meek Mill claimed Drake pays a ghostwriter to compose the songs. The brawl between the two crooners took place on social media platform Twitter and Instagram. In an interview with Fader last week, Drake said he sought to defend himself against false claims initially made by Meek Mill on his songwriting. He also says he is not ashamed of of working with others to spark an idea for recording a new tune. The news of Drake's comment about his beef with Meek Mill comes just as the rapper opened a new restaurant in Toronto called Fringe. Fringe has a so- had a soft opening on, on September 23rd in his collaborative effort between Drake and Iron Chef alum Chef Susu Lee. Additionally, Forbes recently placed Drake at, at third place in its list of richest rappers in the hip-hop industry, trailing behind Diddy and, and Jay-Z. Jessica Duggar shared her excitement over her forthcoming TLC specials with fans Saturday. The 22-year-old former 19 Kids and Counting star said she is, quote, looking forward to her return to television at the Southern Women's Show in Orlando, Florida. The network announced last week Duggar and her sister Jill Duggar will take partake on the new TV specials. She revealed we're going to be doing some filming preparing to welcome this little one into our lives confirming that one of her specials will focus on herself and husband, Ben Seatwald, as they prepare to welcome their first child. It's going to be great. Another special is expected to follow Jill Duggar, her husband, Derek Diller, and their son, Israel, as they embark on a mission trip to El Salvador. The 24-year-old is the second eldest Duggar daughter and recently became a midwife after returning home from the assignment. Duggar wrote on Instagram, we're looking forward to reconnecting with everyone with the new specials on TLC. Many have asked of our mission work and about the challenges of taking our family to a different country, culture, and learning a new language. We appreciate your prayers. Duggar and her family came to fame on 19 Kids and County, which was canceled following eldest sibling Josh Duggar's molestation scandal. She and Jill Duggar subsequently appeared on the special Breaking the Silence, which addressed the abuse. Singer Kelly Clarkson has canceled the remainder of her Piece by Piece headlining tour. The 33-year-old American singer announced she won't be performing in Canada and the U.K. as planned to remain on vocal rest per doctor's orders. Car- Carlson, w- Clarkson will stay on vocal rest for the rest of the year. She said in a statement, I'm truly sorry that I have to cancel the remainder of my tour dates. I was looking forward to sharing this tour with all my amazing fans in Canada and the U.K. Fortunately, my doctor is telling me to... Uh, I- 
telling me I have to stay on vocal rest, but I am working hard to get better as fast as possible. The news comes just weeks after Clarkson canceled the remainder of her U.S. tour dates. He said, she, she wrote at the time, this kills me, but doctors are saying I need to rest my voice. I can't wait to get healthy and see y'all back on the road soon. Please know that I never cancel anything unless it's absolutely necessary. Clarkson released her album the same name in February and kicked off the Piece by Piece tour on July 11th in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Her last performance was on September 10th in Atlanta, Georgia. It was scheduled to bring the tour to a close on November 20th in London, England. The singer revealed she and her husband, Brandon Back. Blackstock are expecting their second child in August. She and a 38-year-old talent manager married in October 2013 and already parents to 15-month-old daughter River. As Pope Francis returns to the Vatican from his historic visit to the United States, his message of hope, faith, and unity will continue to spread in the form of a pop rock album entitled Wake Up. The Vatican approved the LP as a collaboration between the Pope and music label Believe Digital. The album will feature speeches made in Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, and English addressing the issues such as peace, dignity, and the needy. The speeches will be infused with music ranging from pop, rock, and Gregorian chants. Set for release on February, November 27th, the 11th track album is now available for pre-order on iTunes, and the first single, Wake Up, Go, Go, Forward, has been released on SoundCloud. On Sunday, Pope Francis entered the final leg of his whirlwind United States tour with the farewell mass and visits with bishops and prison inmates. As all is true, Back to the Future fans know October 21st, 2015 is a very important day for time travelers. It's the day in the 80s Marty McFly arrives in his future for the first time. It turns out it's also going to be the date that Christopher Lloyd's Doc Brown makes his long way return from the Wild West. Universal has released a teaser for Doc Brown Save the World, an exclusive short in, included in the 30th anniversary reissue of the Back to the Future trilogy, showing Lloyd rep- reprising his role as Doc Brown, uh, as the absent-minded inventor and in getting out of the iconic DeLorean time machine one more time. Although quite clear what he's up to beyond, that remains unclear for now. This is actually the second time Lloyd has played Doc Brown this year. In May, he returned to the character in a teaser for the multi-franchise crossover video game Lego Dimensions. Quite where Mary Steenberger's Claire Clayton is during all of this is a question no one has seemed to fit to answer just yet. Doc Brown Saves the World is just one of the number of extras extras included in the reissue, including a 2009 retrospective documentary on the movie trilogy, two episodes of the short-lived animated spinoff, which also include Lloyd reprising his role in live-action introductions, and Out of Time, Saving the DeLorean, a documentary about the restoration of one of sci-fi's most famous cars. Back to the Future's 30th Anniversary Trilogy will be released on Blu-ray and DVD on October 21st, of course. Iconic crime drama series CSI Crime Scene Investigation solved its last case Sunday with an emotional series finale. The two-hour installment reunited the ensemble cast with old favorites including original protagonist Gil Grissom, played by William Peterson, with Sarah Siddle, played by Georgiana Fox, Catherine Willows, played by Mark Helen Marge Heglenberger, Jim Brass, played by... Paul Gillifoyle, David Hodges, played by Wallace Lingham, Greg Sanders, played by Eric Zamanda, and Grissom's uh, Dominatrix friend, Lady Heather, played by Melinda Clark. The final episode involves the forensics team coming back together after a bomber blows up a casino owned by Willows. Subsequently, evidence starts to point towards Lady Heather until it becomes clear that she was being framed by one of her clients. However, the real drama of the finale was Seidel and Grissom working together again after getting divorced earlier in the series. Both characters admitted to Lady Heather that they are still in love with each other, and in the end, Grissom and Seidel sail off on his boat into the sunset. After 15 seasons and 337 episodes, CSI crime scene investigation has plenty of twists and turns, several cast changes, and three television spinoffs. Cast spoke with People Magazine to discuss the series and take a look back at some of their most memorable guest stars, including Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift. Bieber, who played a serial bomber in two 
2011 episode surprise audience with its dark character and is credited for reeling in a younger demographic to tune in to the show. Anthony Zucker, uh, the series creator, said he was huge back then. We brought in a bunch of new viewers for us during that time. We don't get really starstruck in the business, but it was just really fun to kind of have somebody that huge on the globe to come do the show. Despite the hike and Brady's cast members recall the pop star being a nuisance on set, playing pranks on the crew, and someone who was difficult to work with. Zucker said, we definitely did not want him back. He had to apologize to the crew when coming back, which he did. He left in good graces, but boy, we didn't like him for a bit. Swift, however, was the exact opposite when she guest starred on the show as a murdered teenager. John Willner, who played toxicologist Henry Anderson, uh, excuse me, H- Henry Andrews for several seasons, spoke highly of the singer when he recalled the first time he met her. Uh, Wendler recalls, I went to, into the makeup trailer and she was there and, you know, you don't want to be a fan. She's getting her makeup done and she jumps out of the chair and says, Henry, that's my character. The fact that Taylor Swift knows who I am, I made it. She was with her mom, just so happy to be there with the perfect attitude. I thought she did an amazing job. If you saw the episode, she really kills it. As CSI closes the Morge drawer for the last time, Zucker is confident in the show's impact and its lasting legacy. He says, I still think when we're all gone, I believe CSI will still rerun and be honored when cherished like The Twilight Zone and I Love Lucy. That's great company. And now let's look back at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1913, Stanley Kramer, the director and producer whose best-known message movies included Defiant Ones, Judgment in Nuremberg, and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, tackled controversial political and social themes, is born in New York City. During his career in Hollywood, Kramer was nominated for six Academy Awards as producer and three Oscars as a director, although he never took home a gold statuette and worked with a long list of prominent stars, including for Humphrey Bogart, Frank Sinatra, Fred Astaire, Cary Grant, Sophia Loren, and Vivian Leigh. After working a number of jobs in the movie industry, Kramer formed an independent production company in the late 1940s. As a producer, his early credits include the multi-Oscar-nominated film Champion in 1949, which starred Kurt Douglas as a self-destructed boxer, and Home of the Brave about racial intolerance during World War II, and The Men in 1950 about disabled veterans, which marked Marlon Brando's film debut. Kramer also produced 1952's High Noon, a Western featuring Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly that garnered them Academy Award, seven Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture. In the 50s, Kramer made a string of films for Columbia Pictures, including the box office hit that came Mutiny in 1954, about life aboard a U.S. Navy ship during World War II. The film, which starred Humphrey Bogart, Jose Ferrer, Fred McMurray, and Van Johnson, was nominated for seven Oscars, including Best Picture. After several years with Columbia, Kramer left to direct such films as the Oscar-nominated The Defiant Ones in 1958, which starred Tony Curtis and Sidney Poitier as a pair of escape, escape convicts forced to deal with the issue of racism, and On the Beach, which examined the topic of nuclear war. Kramer also helmed such movies as Inherit the Wind in 1960 with Spencer Tracy and Gene Kelly about the Scopes Bunky Trial and the Teaching of Evolution and Judgment in Nuremberg about the World War II Nazi war crime trials. The film, which featured Spencer Tracy, Burke Lancaster, Melinda Dietrich, Judy Garland, and Montgomery Cliff, re- received 11 nominations, including Best Picture and Best Director. His 1967 film, Guest is Coming to Dinner, starring Katherine Hepburn and Spencer, Spencer Tracy, his parents who must deal with the fact that their daughter, played by Katherine Hogginson, has brought home an African-American fiancé, played by Sidney Poitier, will earn 10 Oscar nominations, including Best Director and Best Picture. Hepburn won a Best Actress Academy Award for her performance. The film was her last with Tracy, her longtime companion who died before the film was released. The last movie Kramer directed was The Runner Stumbles in 1979, starring Dick Van Dyke and Kathleen Quinlan. He died at the age of 87 in Woodland Hills, California, on February 19, 2001. And that's your entertainment report for Tuesday, September 29th, 2015. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. 
Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.